Welcome to The Bar's Loaded, my name's Danny Taylor. And I am Thomas Regan. We've got a very special guest with us today, Becky Caslin. Becky has been involved with Taylor Strength, um, but not on our podcast because it's relatively new. But um, I've had a good relationship with Becky for a good few years now. We're going, how many years now, Becky? Well, when I was 14, now I'm 22, so... 20 years. A year or so. For you guys who don't know, uh, Becky is a Muay Thai kickboxer. Um, She is a world champion in the WTKA, correct me if I'm wrong. Correct. Uh, Recent world champion as well, that's where uh, we actually went to watch as well, didn't we? Yeah. Thomas, a couple of people from the gym as well. And it was was a fight in Liverpool, wasn't it? Yeah, it was. yeah, so that's um, we're going to talk a little bit more about what Becky's achieved today, um, how strength has affected her journey in Muay Thai kickboxing, and some of the things that we used to do when we trained as well back in the day. Um, your little stint in powerlifting, and we're going to talk a little bit about like what your plans are for the future and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So um, this is a little bit of a different episode today, guys. We're going to be uh, touching on how martial artists and people who do combat sports like Muay Thai um, can benefit from strength training where the psychological um, side of things comes in as well that's where Thomas is going to come in um, and just getting to know Becky and how she got started on this journey of Muay Thai went from uh, amateur fight into pro and then becoming the world champion how old are you now Becky? Um, just turned 22. How old was you when you started doing Muay Thai kickboxing? Um, I was nine years old. Wow. <laughs> so it's literally like, it's forever. such an integral forever. part of your life then, isn't it? Forever now. That's mad. I started, it's funny really, I started uh, when I was nine and obviously my mum used to have me like during the week and then my dad would have me like weekends and maybe one day during the week. And um, my dad used to train himself in St. Helens and Haydock and it was his turn to marry me so I went to watch and obviously whilst he was training I was being a bit of a pain so in the end he just came over to me and was like well listen take your shoes and socks off you're joining in like just try and punish me and he was gutter because after that then he had to take me every single week he loved it and I'm still here now Good. still here still going now yeah wow so it all started because you were being a little shit yeah watching me dad training being a pain he was like take your shoes and socks off right you? you're training now yeah. kind of thing after that he was devastated every did single you... week it's like can we go training can we go training did you, at what point did you know that like it was going to become like just a way of life for you? I think because my dad used to do it as well. Like I was always watching him train, and then because we because we were doing it together, that was like our thing. So he was always going training when I was with him, so I had to train it. And he, I was always it's funny I was always bad at training, like hitting pads. I was always awful. Couldn't lift kick, couldn't punch. But then when they put me in the ring and someone hit hit, hit me, I'd want to hit them back straight away. So I was awful at training. But then, always amazing at fight. I've never seen someone so rubbish at training who's ready for a fight before. Like, I was awful. Must have been just instinct, like, when yeah. you got into the ring. Like, it was just that, like, because usually if someone gets it, obviously you cry at that, that age, but then I was literally nine, getting hit by girls, you're like 11, 12. And then. Hitting them back, even though. Yeah, I... when they hit me, I was like, I was fuming. I was like, I really want to hit these. Like, <laughs> so I was, I was awful at training, but then when I come to fighting, I was actually all right. I was actually mm. quite good. When, when do you think. Um, you were good we well you did well in your training aspect more than actually getting in the ring and fighting um just because i was winning so many fights obviously i was always in the gym so it just come naturally really mm. i never really focused on right i've got to get this left kick yeah. just i was training literally four or five days a week um, and at that age you should be at home playing the doubles or yeah. doing dance or but i was always just, scraps. yeah just training all the time so over time it just come naturally and obviously I was always seeing my dad, so whenever, whenever spare time he had, he was just training. How often were you training then? So you started when you was nine years old. Yeah. The inspiration for it was because you were a pain in the ass and your dad yeah. was like, right, you're doing something now instead of yeah. being annoying over there. Um, and then that was it. So how did you, how did you kind of, the word I'm looking for? How did you adapt to that at such an early age? Like, it was that's a lot for it, like I a know. young person. Like, what was I doing when I was in that? What was you doing when you were in that? <laughs> Collecting footy I was picking, I had my fingers stuck in my nose. You know what I mean? I was playing with action men and yeah. Yeah, footy stickers and Pokemon. I think it's because, like, the training that I've got now as well, I've been with him since I was, Alan Coffin, I've been with him since I was nine. 
Like, so that's is that your original? That's coach? my original trainer. Yeah, I, I, I was started with him. And still with when him I was now. Nine, yeah. Wow. I made a mistake, a massive mistake of leaving that gym, um, when I was about fourteen, fifteen, um, and luckily enough, when I wanted to turn pro, I tried. Alan took me back. Um, that was the biggest mistake I've ever made is leaving that gym originally. Um, and then from a young age, like I always knew I had, I was good, but then he made me believe in myself more. Like he kept reassuring me how good it was, and he was like, if you, if you keep fighting, you're gonna be good. And because he was always putting time into me, it, it wasn't really a chore. I enjoyed it that much that going training three or four times a week didn't didn't really bother me. Like if my mates were going to parties, then that's fine. But I'm going to do it. Like you know, I enjoyed it that much. Like that, it wasn't it wasn't that a chore. Was I looked forward to going. Yeah, like. Do you think because you started from such a young age, like it put you on like the straight and narrow path? Yeah. So like yeah. avoiding a lot going of out and yeah. getting pissed. I think with it would have been a lot harder if I started later on after yeah. I'd had that experience of going out all the time. I don't. I'm not. It doesn't bother me. I, I just think like had I started at 16, 17, once I'd had that opportunity to go out and like everyone else goes out, I would have been like, oh, I'm really missing out here but because I don't know what I'm missing out on. It's not an issue because I don't know any difference. So going out, like staying on a Saturday because I've got training on Sunday, or staying on a Sunday because I've got training on, on Monday, it, it's no different to me. It's the so, norm for you. Yeah, it's the norm. Yeah. So it doesn't. It's not really. It's, it's enjoyable. It's not a chore. It's but I choose you, to do it. So. Go on, Tommy. But at the same time, it's like you're staying in on a Saturday because you love it so much on the Sunday. Like they might, yeah. they might love going out. It's weird, isn't it? It's strange. Like, if I, like me, makes me like, oh, what are you doing? Then? Like when you say to your friends, like, oh, I've got pain in, they don't understand the extent of it. Yeah. Like, so they don't understand, like, if, like I'm one of them people, if I miss one pain session, it's in my head, I've missed a pain session. Or, yeah. I'm fine for my fit, like this. So, like, yeah. to them, they don't really understand it. It's not until you do it yourself that you understand Definitely. the impact that it has. That's probably the part and parcel of most professional sports, though. Like, yeah. Um, like, you've got footballers or golfers and that, and you've got, let's go out. I can't, I've got training at 9 yeah. o'clock in the morning. I'm a professional, I get paid for this, I have to, I can't just drink. Yeah. Like, we, we, if we go out for a night out, it doesn't really affect us that much. But for the likes of you... It takes a good week to, yeah. yeah. I'm not a big drinker anyway, I don't really, I'm not a big drinker, so I'm not, I'm not missing out on anything. It's mm. not, I don't see it as a sacrifice, I just see it as an investment in myself, so it's not really, like me, if I don't go out on Saturday with my friends, that's not a sacrifice. Yeah. That's me with doing a fight camp properly, like, I don't see the issue really. So you know when when you were fourteen, you were you said like this the first time you met Danny. Yeah. When you came in here, like what was your like, goals when you came in at such a young age? Well, I had a, I didn't really know I could turn a professional so soon because I turned pro when I was sixteen. Um, but I knew that because I'm so tall for the weight, the girls at that weight were a lot bigger. So I just thought like if we start strength earlier, I'd be a bit tougher you know, for, the, for that weight. And then obviously I started with Danny when the gym was only small. Like they were literally in a little upstairs area. Yeah. Empowering fitness in town. Um it was just like you just started out. Um and we used to just do two two sessions a week maybe. Mm. Just used to hammer it. And then the more I done it, the, I could feel myself getting stronger and stronger. So then that's just where the strength aspect came into it. Did, yeah. did, and did that tie into your Muay Thai? Do you feel like you were better at Muay Thai because yeah, of your strength training? Yeah, I've always been life for, for like what I fight at to like weight, but I've always been dead tall. The only thing I've, I wouldn't say I've lacked, but the only thing that I can improve on is, is the strength side, yeah. which is why I started out so early with it from 14 onwards. Whereas now, when I do fight girls like, that are bigger, even though they're the same weight, I don't I don't really feel it as much because I'm doing strength myself now. So, that's that, that's how does that affect your training then? So, you, you've got strength training um, as part of your training camp yeah. when you're in the lead up to a fight. Um, at what point do you need to start doing stop? the strength training or start um, doing more of the actual fighting? Well, we, my Muay Thai coach is my strength coach as well because he's yeah. a PT. So, we, so at the minute now, I'm in a fight camp, so I'm about eight weeks out. Um, we'll do pure strength now because obviously we're so far out. So like, the injury is not really, I'm not going to get injured, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, the closer you get to the fight, the more careful you have to be. So once it gets to like three weeks out, we start doing more like, we still do strength but it's more crossfit type so the fitness is included yeah because yeah. at the minute it, it is just pure strength so and when you say pure strength, strength they'll be squats. talking like uh, low volume but heavy yeah, weight heavy so weight, yeah. and then like as the fight camp less reps less yeah. sets but just 
banging it heavy. Yeah, heavy reach, yeah. We're trying to be heavy, you know, skinny arms, so trying to be How do you find that's helped your power? In I terms feel, of like striking? I feel a lot stronger at that. I remember when I first went back to Alan, um, I hadn't done strength um, for a little bit. Um, and I was, I couldn't, I couldn't even do a press up. Like, I literally couldn't do a press up. Couldn't do a pull up. Like, and I'm only, I'm only like doing, so I should be able to do a pull up. Couldn't mm. do a pull up. Couldn't really lift, couldn't, I'd have like a bit of time off. Um, and then over, since, since I went back, I've done at least one session a week with Alan, um, strength wise. And see now for that week, I feel like, I've, obviously there's still room for improvements, and I, I can, I'm still working on it, but I'm a lot stronger than what I was when I went back to him. What body weight are you now? Yeah, at the minute I'm I well, got weight up last night. I'm fifty one kilo. What you fight at? Um, 49, 49. 49. Yeah. Are you the world champion in the forty nine kilo class? Forty eight kilo. Forty eight kilo. Yeah. Right. So it's a forty eight kilo class. Yeah. And then what's the next one up and what's the next one down? The next class will be up up the fifty kilo. Right. So um, it's really like. Yeah. Marginal. Yeah. Marginal. Yeah. Very yeah. small. Yeah. 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 I walk around with that weight, but I don't. I don't. I have eat what I want, so. I don't diet to get to be what, so I, I think it was just because of all the sweets and all the Nando's, because I love Nando's. We know you love Nando's. Yeah, if I cut off the Nando's, I'd be all right, I can, 48 just comes naturally. How, how do you think you'd fare in the 50s? Um, all right, I think I'd be good, but I just don't, at the minute, because I'm doing so well, I'm like excelling in the category that I'm in, I don't feel the need to rush. If I was struggling to get to 49 or struggling, I wouldn't, I wouldn't even call it dieting, I don't even diet, and I don't have to diet to get to for all to do is be better. I don't, I just cut out the Nando's. That's exactly what you want. cut out the sweets, like I just, I don't diet to get, to, I don't kill myself like all these fighters do. I don't, yeah, water cuts and all that. Yeah, I just eat what I want when I want, yeah. clean, I just drink what I want when I want. Um, so obviously when I start struggling to get to that, I won't kill myself, I'll just move up at the minute. Cause I'm, I'm excelling at 48, so I don't feel the need to. When you get into a fight camp then, do you, does your nutrition change? Do you, do you become more strict? Do you try and yeah. put better fuel in? Yeah, on, yeah. I didn't, I didn't used to. Yeah. That was the mistake that I used to make. Um, Mars again, bars before the, uh, yeah, the I big did, I didn't really have a good understanding until I went to Alan, really. Um, I was only young, so it was kind of like, eat what you want when you want, because you're only young. And I think it's not, it's a bit harsh to me, like, at nine on diet, you know what I mean? Yeah. And obviously, when I went back to Alan, I was older, and my body was a bit more mature, so he doesn't, he doesn't even say diet, he just, Gives me advice on the right foods to eat. You just gotta be smart. Like you can't go to Nando's and you've got like bread sandwiches yeah. week stuff. Yeah, you know definitely. I mean? like, you just gotta be smart, haven't you? Yeah, um, and I was sponsored by um, Goodness Grill. Yeah. For the World Title Fight. You know? yeah. So they were just doing me meals for me as well. So do you count macros or do you just eat or just stick I, to a calorie? Um, usually just calorie. Just calorie. Um, yeah, because I don't have to lose weight. Yeah. So I can still include carbs. Yeah. I don't want to put anything out that I need. If yeah. that makes sense. Like I don't, like, I don't need to cut out carbs. And you manage your weight, you weigh yourself every day? Um, no, we have a Monday, the dread of Monday in our gym. Every Monday everyone gets weighed when they're fighting. Yeah, everyone so is that, it, just hop on is the that during camp? Yeah, during No matter camp. what, everyone will get weighed. If, yeah, if you go to fight camp, you'll get weighed on, on every Monday, yeah. So, your record, Becky, is extensive to say the least. Um, and it's probably the most ridiculous <laughs> record I've ever seen from any sport. And I don't know whether that's just because I've not done research or but it's just, it's, it's immense. Like, I'm just, we've got a few notes here. So, you're the current world champion in the WTKA. Yeah. yeah? Mm -hmm. um, in the 48 kilo class. Yeah. You're the current golden belt European champion in the same weight class. Yeah. The current British champion in the British, in the British, in the golden belt association. Yeah. Wait, the same weight class. Is that 48 or 49? In 48, yeah. 48. Yeah. So you're you're a multiple British record holder, aren't you? Yeah. Because you've got yeah. this in a different weight class as well, haven't you? Yeah. Forty nine, I've got here. Um, one times European junior champion, mm -hmm. five times British junior champion, uh, four times area junior champion, and I guess that's regional. That's North West. Northwest, yeah. yeah. And then your current pro records thirteen and one. Yes. Um. <clears throat> but. You've actually fought a lot more than that, haven't you? I have. So, at amateur level, how many fights did you have? How many did you win? This is funny, I only had one amateur fight. So, amateur is head contact. Um, right, with, okay. Head con amateur is head contact yeah. with just uh, head guards, chin guards, um, and just gloves. Yeah, okay, at, then. At, at a junior level, I'm going to say I had about 80, 89 fights. 
Maybe. I don't I really have no idea anymore. That's ridiculous. I know. That is ridiculous. Did you win most of them? Do you know do you know what the record is? Uh, I lost two. You lost two. I 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 lost two. Fighting a lot. Yeah, mm-hmm. I know how many how many fights have you had in total, and like like just all time doesn't matter what whether it's pro, amateur, junior doesn't matter. Yeah, I literally couldn't even tell you anymore. Is it triple digits? Yeah, it's gotta be over hundred now. If you include if you include junior fights, I've been doing it since I was nine, so hundred percent. Can't can't be any less than a hundred. How many fights? If that's including also? junior, yeah, I've lost three times. Three times. Three times. Out of like a hundred. Yeah. Times. Ridiculous. I don't want any more. Just for the record. Yeah, no, that's very impressive. It's n- not many people can say that. So how does that make you feel? You know, when you when, when you think about that, you've only been beat three times in your entire life, and you've had hundreds of fights. I don't really think about it. You know, like I don't, people say this to me, and I'm like, yeah, yeah, like yeah, thanks. You know what I mean? I don't really. I don't want to get to a stage where I think I'm invincible. Like I've made that mistake before. I don't want to think, oh yeah, I didn't do I like that, humble. Easy. It's good. I don't want to think like, oh, I'm unbeatable because I'm, I'm not. I've been beat three times. I know it's not a lot, but it shows that I'm beatable. That makes sense. Obviously, there's yeah. always room um, to improve. Yeah. There's always someone better, I yeah. find, uh, in any sport. I just hope that I've already found it. Not, not, yeah. not in Becky's class, though. In a Apparently team. not. World champion. Apparently <laughs> not. Yeah. The best of the best. Indeed. Yeah, so. That's crazy. So. At what point then? Because you've had so many fights as a junior. Yeah. So that, that was the most, that's where the bulk of the fights were. Yeah. Um, you know, one amateur, you've had 14 pro. Um, at what point from junior and amateur, whether it's like age or whatever, did you know that you had to go pro? I literally didn't have a, a clue. What happened was... What's that even mean as well? If you can answer that. A professional. Yeah, like, yeah, what, what's the difference? You just have gloves on. No shin guards. No pardon, it's just a pair of gloves. Okay. So if you get kicked in the head, you get kicked in the head. That's so it's it's only rules that define them. Yeah, obviously basically. as a professional you get paid as well. Right, okay. Um, so that's a big difference. Yeah, I wasn't supposed to turn, well obviously I was supposed to turn pro, but usually you'd have a few amateur fights and what happened was um, I took a fight on three weeks notice in Scotland. Um, I thought it was amateur. I got there and Dad was like, oh, it's pro by the way. And I was like, oh, I was only 16, you know what I mean? Yeah. So that, that was, and then from then on after that, I just wanted to make sure I've had one pro fight. It, it wouldn't make sense to go back to putting padding back on. Yeah. Like it, now it's time to start when I'm really young, so mm. I did, just excel from there. Did you feel like you got put in the deep end when you went up to one amateur fighting and going pro straight away, or was um, it natural for you just to? Not able? really. I am. Um, it's a. It's a lot. I took the most the hardest thing for me was going from junior because there's no head contact mm. to head contact. Like that took me a while so never been, I've never really been a boxer. Um, I was I could punch but I didn't really use my hands much because I'm so tall. Yeah. I've never really had to. Um, so the hardest transition for me was going from junior no head contact to head contact. Like it took me a while. I think I took a good few months off just to train and get used to being punched in the face by people. Really, if you can get used to that, then. So I think it's hard that. to get used to talking <laughs> from um, experience in martial arts and jiu two of the years. If you don't get punched in the face every week, it becomes a fear. Yeah. And it's it you, like, and then that changes everything when you spar or when you it's fight. Really, yeah. Like I know when I've not been doing sparring for a while, because ours is like it's not as full on as say combat sports is. Yeah. When it's like right with sparring, it's like I'll find myself either stepping back or turning away when someone punches, yeah. and it's like you no, know, like you can't do that. Um, step in or just get punched in the face and then That's it's fine I mean, then. Yeah. I think it's because I've done it so young as well, like now it's just natural to me. Because yeah. I've made the transition, like, like I think to myself I can't get any worse. Like I'm full time, I'm fighting full time rules, I can't get any worse now, like this is it, this is as bad as it's gonna get. Yeah, so I, I can do it now, exactly. I can only get better at it, you know what I mean? Yeah, I find like when it comes back to the Jiu Jitsu thing, when I, when I start to spar and I'm always defending, I never step in. Because I've always got a fear that if I step in, I'm just gonna get a punch to the face. I don't know how you feel about that, but I I, I do have like an, an, an innate some. fear of getting knocked out. It's just natural. It's just a natural it thing. Take, yeah, it does take some getting used to. Yeah. I've only ever nearly been knocked out once. And like, it was my first amateur fight in Scotland when the girl was a, like, a boxer. And it was only, I think it was the fight was only three twos. Um, it was in, up in Scotland. Um, and it was the last 30 seconds of the fight. And like, I, I was winning comfortably. Like, I was chopping the legs off. Like, I was, I was in a good place. And like she's through a kick and like I've stepped back 
towards the boots. Gotcha. And as I've come forward, she's just got like a few big white hands and my legs wobbled. So you stepped into it? I stepped, I've walked right onto it. Worst. Like it was an invitation. Like, I just seen a white flash and I was like, I'm, I'm gone, yeah, I'm gone. Yeah. And I was like, stand your feet. I was like, oh. How do you, how do you like respond or react? Is it like fight or flight or? I just, I, I knew I was in the fight and I knew I only had like 10 seconds of the fight left. Like just stay on your feet right now. Like, don't it adrenaline for you? Yeah. yeah. I had a bad headache after then. Yeah. Proper headache. I bet you did. Proper headache. So how did you feel, so if you, obviously you've just been hit, mm. and then your legs have gone a bit, how do you like stay up and how do you, uh, do you like still focus on the person or is it more like just defending yourself or? At that, I was really young at the time, so at that moment in time, I was just like, stay on your feet. Mm. Like, I'd mm. never been hit that hard before. Yeah. She was bigger, she was stronger, older, a lot more experienced, and obviously I wasn't used to the head contact, that was like my first one. So I was just like, stay on your feet. That was the only thing going from your armor, stay on your feet and you've won. I can slightly relate. When during my black black belt reading, um I I was in that room for two hours, it was just it was relentless. And I just kept saying to myself, Don't go down. Like it's horrible. I wasn't thinking about what I was doing, that was just all Thomas. Yeah. Um I was thinking, don't go down. Because if I go down, I'm gonna struggle to get back up. Um I was thinking like don't get hit. No, <laughs> you know yeah. what I mean? Yeah. Don't, <coughs> don't get hit. And just don't go down. And um, yeah, nearly died, but there we are. <laughs> so good. But like, that's n- obviously nothing compared to someone literally trying to take your head off. Yeah, like, once you go down there as well, like, you're fueling their fire, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, they know you're hurt, so they're going to come forward more. But as if, like, there's nothing more annoying, even in sporting, like, I spot a lad in the gym, Alfie, he's only 16, and like, I'll hit him and I'll hit him. And Papa tried me ask, and he's still there. I'm like, go away. Like, it's yeah. not a more frustrating yeah. than when you're hitting someone so hard and they're just still there. Yeah. Like, it disheartens you, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, like, if you go down, you're. Don't you there. spar against, like, fully grown men, though? Like, yeah, there's only me. The itty girls and, and. My best mate in the gym, that's it. There's two of us, and then the rest are all just blads. All big rocks. Yeah. So all your all your fight plans with the big lads. Boys, yeah, big lads, men. That must be that must be like good for confidence when you're going into a fight, yeah, knowing you, you're fighting against like lads who are in two, three, four times like yeah. weight classes. Don't get me wrong, like they don't like boot you, that, like boot you. You know what I mean? Like, but they all do like enough so you feel it. Yeah. But, like it's there probably it's there like fifty percent of them, but to me and Meg it's like seventy percent. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, but then when you go in a fight and you fight someone your own weight. If you think you're hurt, I just tell myself, well, you spar, lads that are bigger. Then, yeah, then that's really reassuring. Sure. You're not hurt, like, stop lying. Stop, mm. stop lying to yourself, like, you're not. I it's all in the mind, isn't it? Like, yeah. I remember um, when I went to Next Gen and I seen uh, Molly sparring and she was just sparring against lads, and obviously she's in the UFC. So yeah. it's like, yeah. it must have a. It does a, pay off. Yeah, it pays yeah. off in skill and, like, you get better fighting. Yeah. Lads. When you fight someone your own weight, not. When you fight someone your own weight, then you hit, yeah. You don't, obviously, you don't laugh, but you're like, it's not is that it? Yeah. Like, is that all you? Is that it? Because you're used to getting hit by Because you're used to getting hit by lads. And like, yeah. that's the thing with our gym, like, some, no disrespect to like, other gyms and stuff like that, but other gyms have to go elsewhere and get the sparring, yeah. have to go elsewhere and get the strength. In our gym, everything's there. Yeah. You've got the strength conditioning, room next door. What's the name of the gym, Becky? Um, it is Elite Performance Centre, Acro Centre, and then um, the Thai Boxing Gym is for two room of Thai. Where is it? Um, Edwards Lane and um, Queen's Cross slash Speed. There you go. If you're thinking about doing Muay Thai, yeah. get yourselves down there. Everything's there. The boxing coaches are there. Um, and obviously the Thai boxing gym's there. And like, all your sparring partners are there. Mm. Obviously, if you go somewhere else, then that's a bonus. But you won't find any harder sparring than what's in that gym. Do you just ever go to other gyms and spar with them? If you're um, like friendly with other gyms, yeah, kind of some, like how it is Yeah, sometimes go down to Manchester. Yeah. Um, but then, yeah, it's it's funny because you'll find more fighters from other gyms coming to our gym. Yeah, that's Spar, good. Like our gym's got it all. Like the spar, you will find sparring partners like our gym. Yeah. So like we we go through it all together. You know what I mean? We all do the strength together. We all do the, the sparring together, and it's just it's a nice atmosphere. Really. Boss. It makes it very easy. Would you say that um like um girls or women who want to fight Muay Thai would you say it's a benefit for them to to fight lads, do you think it's better for skill development for them? So if say if they're in just an all girls class or mm. something, would you would you say to them, um, go and fight lads for sparring or would you just say stick to it? Uh, 
I think it depends on how confident you are. Mm. Like, I never used to spoil lads all the time. It was only when I obviously went back to. I used to spoil lads, like, sometimes, but like now, in Ireland's gym, it's like all the time. Because obviously, mm. not, like, it's more like a type of. It's like more, it's more manly, isn't it? It's not really. Obviously, loads, loads like, so many girls do do it. Um, but it's more of a manly sport. So it is. You haven't really got a choice in our gym. It's like, typically dominated yeah. by men. You haven't really got a choice in our gym. Yeah. Like, it's. You either spar, just you and men, just spar for the whole session or. As far as that's, but I think it's good for your confidence because if you're even if you're only landing one shot on, on a, one of the lads, like they're bigger than you, like they're a lot not better but like stronger. Yeah. So if yeah. you can land one shot on that lad, then that's one shot. Yeah, do you know what I mean? In terms I of like being able to take damage as well, yeah, if they're throwing, yeah, you know, even they're like even if it's only their 40 percent, their 40 percent to you is like 70. Mm, yeah. you, you can take one shot, then that's one shot. Mm. Do you know what I mean? I do think I do think it helps with confidence. When it comes to fighting as well. So Becky, what's your mindset when you go into a big fight like the World Championships then? Because it must mustn't just be physically draining, but mentally draining as well. It must be a lot of work you need to yeah. do from the from it's, the psychological side. It's exceptionally, I think I struggle more. I think mentally drains me more than it does physically. And coincidentally, you're studying to be a sports psychologist as well, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. At LJMU. I'll be self today. Yeah, so that's uh, well, that's a coincidence. I'll be self <laughs> So tell us more about that then. Um, I was, I was, as a kid, at that young age, you don't really care, do you? You know what I mean? Your record doesn't really matter. You don't really yeah, think about your record, do you? It's like, you go in there, you fight, you win, you go out, you blow up Pepsi, whatever. Yeah. And then you watch Sally do kid stuff. I thought it would have been the other way around. As a kid, I always wants to win everything. No, and now, no. now I'm more humble. Now I'm like, okay, if I lose, then it's a lesson learned. No, I think at a young age, I wasn't really bothered. Obviously, I wanted to win because it, it just come naturally to me and I just seemed to be winning anyway. Yeah. Without me even thinking about it, so I just let it do its thing. Okay. And then when I turned professional, because my record was that good, that's where the pressure started. Like on that transition, people expect you to be the same professionally as you was as a junior, and it's a completely different ball game. Um, so I feel like I put a bit more pressure on myself. Yeah. To keep the record clean. Is that because of other people's expectations of you? Is that in, I, in your you know head? What? Is that what um, you feel I'm like my own worst critic. Right. I am bothered about other, not really people, but like me trainer, like yeah. I'm really bothered what he thinks, like if if I win a fight and I've done something wrong and it's bothered him, then I want to know. Yeah. Because obviously there's always room for improvement, like I don't want to be like, oh yeah, well yeah, that was good that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? He's always been like, that was a good fight, like and that's me having the glory, then like when you go back to the gym, like this is where, this fight didn't go so well. So like I don't, yeah, um, but I'm my own worst critic, like. I always find, and it's not really. Sometimes it's a good thing, sometimes it's not. Oh, yeah. So your mindset going into like a big fight, like the world champs, then, like uh, like you did in the in the lead up to your, your previous fight when that you won one. the world championship. Yeah. What What was your mindset like? Hundred percent. That was the fit. I'd been working with Thomas, and um, before the fight, and that mm. was the best I've ever been for for a professional fight. And I'm not even just saying that like hundred percent. If you ask anyone that knows me, that's the calmest, most confident I've been. For a fight in my life, like you did as, look as, so cool on there, like it was unreal. Like it didn't faze me in the slightest. I knew yeah. in my head that I'd done everything, and I couldn't do any. And I always do do everything. Like it's not like I skip stuff because I don't like I train hard. But for that fight, obviously I've been working with Thomas, and he really taught me how to like deal with that and like mm-hmm. let that sink in. Obviously we'd work on stuff in here, so when it comes to fight nights, I just practice what he told me. And it, what, what would you say then the difference between that fight and your other fights mentally going into it? I feel like I've always thought that doesn't you don't need that help, like you can just ignore it. But like I'm one of them people because I'm my own worst critic. If I miss a training session, like I said before, like it plays in my mind. You if I if I like I'm one of them, like I'll have, I'll train for eight weeks, I'll be so fit. I'll have one pad session before the fight and I'm like right, I'm not fit. I feel unfit there. Yeah. And I'm not fit and this and that. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So Usually, I try and like shut it out. And obviously, when you're in the changing room, I wouldn't say I get worried because I'm not scared because I'm not. But you overthink, and you're wasting your energy on overthinking. Like I've done this, I've trained, I've ran, I've eaten properly. Even though you know when you're there, you're mm. I'm like, have I done this? And then obviously, because I've been away from Thomas for that fight, I didn't even think about it because in my head I knew mm. that I've done everything. You've like, already was, checked everything. Yeah, there was nothing think. to me. To, well, so I think it was just a case of not letting nervous energy. Like out before he even got it. 
Yeah. Well, everybody, and I was just prepared for me to go. Like. I was going to say, last, um, remember we talked about on our last podcast about, um, we talked about you um, um, about auras and like positive, yeah. having positive energy. And I think we've mentioned you on the last three episodes, by yeah. the way. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so we have just talked, you know, the, the positive energy and, you know, we were talking about, you were talking about uh, you, you strive on precious situations. Yeah. And we were talking about like negative energy. Yeah. But what would you say was your like go to? Was it like drawing in the positive energy or was it blocking off the negative? How would you I don't really ever feel I wouldn't even say negative. I think it's drawing on the positives. Mm. The only thing I do do is like well before obviously before I started making my joke, I'd overthink too much, even though I knew the answer. So now we've drawn the positives. Like every time I go into a fight, I've always been the same. I know I've run enough. I know I've trained hard enough. I know I've done everything, so there's no reason for me to keep thinking about it. Yeah. So now it's a case of just drawing on the positives and just knowing that I've done it all. Like, because you're wasting enough, you're wasting energy. Yeah, wasting too much energy. Yeah. And I go in there and like, <gasps> and like the funny part is when you get in, it's a waste of time because it's like I've waited for nothing. It doesn't matter when you're in. Because you're winning now, yeah. so it doesn't matter. Do you yeah. know what I mean? Like it's just stupid. So now I'll just ignore now it. that you're the world champion then the, for the WTKA. Mm-hmm. Um. How does that affect your mindset? Like, is everything still the same to you? Is it, is yeah, it, has, has it hit you yet? Or no, I don't, do you I don't, feel like it's just you're the same old Becky from before? I think I'm what? the same old Becky from before, yeah. Right, so do you feel, do you not feel like you've got, like there's more pressure on you now to perform or to defend the title? No, or? if anything, I just think it shows the level that I'm actually at. I think before. <laughs> completed it, mate. <laughs> completed it, mate, yeah. I think like before, like, obviously you get people saying like, oh yeah, you're good, and you're like, yeah. You know you're good, but then like, before that fight, she was she's highly well, she's highly ranked. She's been around for a long time, and I took her back to the airport. Funny enough, after the fight, really, I did. Yeah, what was that conversation? Awesome. Like? It was alright. Yeah, she was very. Can I just say I love uh, watching Muay Thai and how respectful everyone is to yeah. each other and like the tradition and um, all that. It's like I can relate to it so much with um, doing a traditional martial art like Japanese Jiu Jitsu yeah. as well, just because it is all about like respect for your opponents, yeah. respect for your training partners. Um, you're only as good as your training partner is, da, 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 da. Um, and like the tradition of it all as well, because it originates from Thailand, obviously. Yeah. And arm, don't you? Or something like that. Like yeah, that, that's your, that's your rank, isn't it? Like, and the snake yeah, thing. And the snake thing, yeah. And then like um, something with the kicking away the spirits or something when you're yeah, going like around. Yeah, like the off the ring, yeah. I love that. And then bowing to each other and stuff like that. And I thought that was amazing to see. You don't really see that in MMA. You don't see it in boxing. There's like, no. it's always a bit of bad blood it's or like. like yeah, I, don't, I don't really know about that in boxing, no. Because they always like touch gloves and they all like give each other hugs and that. Before. I mean, like um, in in a lot of boxing fights these days, you will get like the the trash talking and the Tyson Furies and yeah, stuff like yeah. that. You know what I mean? See, I'm all of them. Right? Um, I wouldn't know what to say. And that, that sounds funny because like obviously I'm I'm up there, but I wouldn't know what to say. Like. I just, I just don't say anything. So you, so you see, talk about like social media and stuff so you like talk that. about the airport. I talk about the airport. I, yeah. I, I, I want to know what this conversation went like. <laughs> she couldn't really speak very much English, so I was like translating through her trainer. Yeah. And um, she had about fifty professional fights. She was saying, so obviously, oh. before that fight, it was seen as like a 50-50 fight, maybe even like seventy thirty to it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just, just based on experience and the girls that she's fought, um, and I was just in first gear really for the whole fight. So. I think that, that obviously she's still a good fighter, but I think that shows the level that I can compete at when I put my mind to it. You were so reserved. Like, That's what I mean. Like, I, I wasn't, I didn't fight to how I can fight. That makes sense. So everyone's going to look at that fight and think, oh yeah, I know what she does now, based on that fight. But yeah. I could have fought 10 times better, but I just didn't you, feel you the need. You could tell you were in first gear the yeah. whole time. And like, that show, I think that shows the level that I'm at. Yeah. You, didn't, you didn't even need to go up a gear. Yeah. Like, it was so strategic, that's what I love about like, watching it. Come a few few years ago, that would have been a big name, but it would have been like, wow, I'm not ready for that yet. Yeah. But it's now, I'm like, okay, that's it. I think it, had a, done that. it must have had a, like, being calm as well. Not yeah. going into first, like, not rushing it, not not going, like, balls to the wall, because you yeah. don't really need to. Because I remember when you were in your corner, all you were saying is, I'm calm, I'm confident, I can, I can do this. Like, yeah. she, she, she's not some kind of thing. I think the better the opponent is, the better I fight. Mm-hmm. So like I tend, I wouldn't say bad fight, but like my sloppier fights would be the ones where I should be winning comfortably. But when it's like a, a really really good opponent, which they all are, I tend to fight it a lot better. So would you say your weakness is being complacent? So if it's not a big fight, um, I, I don't. 
I don't underestimate anyone, and I don't. Um, I just think, because I know in my head, if I'm fighting, say I'm fighting like rank one from Spain or whatever, <coughs> in my head, I know that that's like, she's like a big name, so I fight better, if that makes sense. Yeah. Like, the better they are, the better I tend to fight. Mm. I'll, take, I'll take anyone to overtry, but... What's the training like for Muay Thai? Because, mm. you know, for people listening now, they might do martial arts themselves, they might even do Muay Thai, I'll be thinking about getting into it, so... What, what's it like? Is it grueling? It is, is it like yeah. really tough? I don't know about like all the gyms and stuff like that, but our gym is ridiculous. Like, don't get like the beginners that come, like, they get made to feel welcome and like everything gets slowed down for them. But once you start awesome. fighting, um, fight camp, it's, oh, it's, 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 physic- it's like physically draining. Like, it's tell us more about the training then. So, well, my what's, what's your regimen look like? Yeah, I don't want to get too much away, you know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, a typical, uh, just run us through like a typical day well, then tie, without, tie without sessions, revealing too many secrets. Yeah. The Thai <laughs> sessions uh, occur on a Monday, Wednesday, Friday, um, just for one hour. Um, so they only three Thai boxing sessions that I do. That's your skill work. That's so my that's skill work. That's yeah. um, I also work with Dave Funks for me boxing. Yeah, I know Dave. Yeah, um, I also do strength with Alan during the week. Um, I've just upped that then for this fight camp to two days a week. Yeah. Um, probably do that soon. And obviously you've got to do your road work, your sprints. Um, I usually try and have two days off a week, yeah. if I can. Um, or if not, I'll have one full rest day and then one after rest day. That's interesting. Oh, so, uh, so, so there'll be days where you might train twice a day, Oh yeah, if three I'm, times if I'm a day? Camp, yeah, so obviously I've been injured, so last week and this week I've just done one a day. Yeah, just um, back into Tonight, I've just trained this morning, I've done tonight. Um, but then from next week, that's me. What's it like getting into that routine then? Should, should, from, from from going like, uh, is it something you've always done from the age of nine? Or, no, you know, definitely training not. twice a day um, with school and college no. and uni? And how's, uh, how's, that, how's that affect your lifestyle? I think the more I fall professional, the more I realise how much I want, I want it, if that makes sense. So, yeah. the, the bigger fights that I'm getting, like, especially after the last win, the bigger fights that I'm getting, the more I realise how hard I need to train to get where I need to be. Yeah. Like one day, one day, one one session a day, sorry, is not enough. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Like, if I'm doing one session a day, my opponent's doing two. Yeah, got it. Do you know what I mean? So, I don't overdo it. I just, if my body tells me to rest, I'll rest. Yeah, that's but if I can get two in a week, uh, two in a day, I'll do two in a day. It's good that you listen to your body. Yeah, yeah. it's very it's mindful. Very that's a very mindful. Yeah, aspect. I never used to do that. I should come on recently. Yeah, that's uh, that's something I've always struggled with because um, I'm just sort of damn stubborn. Yeah. Like, and I think I that's just, where all my injuries have come from over the years. It's just like, I'll adapt, I'll adapt, I'll adapt. Oh, I'm injured. Yeah, I just um, do whatever Alan tells me to do. Like, he knows how it works. He knows what my body can and can't do. So Al- Alan is he the owner of the gym? Is he? Him, him and Dave have got the gym. Uh, the gym. Him, Dave, and Joe have got the gym together. Um, Alan's been around in Muay Thai for a long Forever. time. Forever. Alan's as old as Muay Thai now. Alan's been in the business for a long time. Like, I assume he's been over to Thailand then for, I have no idea. for training, coaching, stuff like that. I have, no, I have no idea. Have you been to Thailand? Yeah, I, went my, or? I, I didn't fight there that much year. Um, Just training? Yeah, training. That must have been an amazing experience, like doing it with the people who really actually nice, yeah. like brought it in. Yeah, I only went over for a month, um, and a month was definitely long enough. What, what, what would you say the difference was between training here and training in Thailand? Just the heat, like, and like, obviously, their whole, they just, like, their sessions is like a fight camp. Like, even if you're only going to get fit, yeah. or like, it's your first Thai session, you all do the same. So, like, in our gym, like, you're, a fr- like, you're friendly, you know, you know, obviously, if someone's starting brand new, mm. you can't expect them just to do a full fight camp, mm. or like a full Thai boxing session. But in Thailand, you go, you turn up, and it's like, okay. Come on now. and you're like, come on, what, like, what, what now? It's just, it's just really hard, like, because it's consistent, like, it's, obviously here, the, the sessions are like an hour, an hour and a half, over there, it's two hours. Did you two get hours to watch any morning, fights there? Two, no, two hours in the morning, two hours in the evening. Wow, what, what was the difference in coaching, like? I think over there, it's their way of living, isn't it? So obviously, I wouldn't say they know more, because I feel like I'm learning a lot over there, but they're, like, dedicated to it. Yeah. Full, full time, like that's their full time job. Yeah. So like they'll work with you for as long as you need them to. So you so you learned a few things over there. Yeah, a lot. Yeah. Was the many women who've done yeah. it? Yeah. Sure, yeah. That's great. Yeah, yeah. Oh, the only difference is like over there, you can fight like full time, and, and you can live off it. You know what I mean? I think over there is cheaper, 
over here. You can't live off the sport. Really. So would you say there's more big money in Thailand for it than there is over here? If there's big money at all, yeah. Yeah. Would, would you ever consider doing that? Would you ever consider moving I've over? I've considered it a few times, to be fair. You want your mum to be a bit worried if she's like, no, I've been on your own. So even though I'm 22, yeah, but it's definitely something that I want to consider. I've even thought about going back um, next year after I've done my master's just for a few months to see what it's like and then go from there. Really. Would you try and fight over there while you're there? Well, said, that's the biggest like. mistake I didn't do was fight when I was there. But because yeah. I was only there for four weeks when I got there, I hadn't been training, so I had no fitness. So if I go there half fit and train a bit, I'll be ready to fight. So. Get used to training and the humidity. Yeah. yeah. It'd be what? interesting as well to see the difference in fight fight styles, like how more skillful the women are over there yeah. compared to like in Europe. Do you think there'll be much difference or do you think it'll be near enough the, the same, do you think you'll be on the same level as... as I think it's hard like sometimes, like you just throw you in, so you can be a taxi driver and you need a bit of extra money and you can just go and get through any effort, right? So, scrap. it depends, yeah, sometimes it mightn't be as good. So it's kind of, it's kind of like the white collar boxing. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Just, yeah I'll just yeah. sign up yeah. tomorrow and, and I'll see if... Then, uh, Sorry to bring your nans up again, but like, yeah, your nan signed up for a white collar boxing fight. Yeah. <laughs> Just to make a few uh, extra Everybody. bit of a uh, bit, bit of bob on the side. Yeah. So, what would cement your legacy, Becky? I know this is uh, a quite a pr probably a question that's difficult to answer. But is it for you going over to Thailand and becoming a champion over there? Like, no, like yeah, I think... what what do you see like in 10, 20 years from now? Mm -hmm. Like as part of I your legacy. Mind. I, I do want to go to Thailand. I'm I'm fighting like when fights over there, but I'll finish my career where I've started it without a foot shoe though so I, like I want my last fight to be the gymnast I'm not anytime soon by the way I can't see me stopping fighting in my 20s and I'm only really 22 so mm. I've still got at least 8 years what? but I want my fight to be I want my last fight to be in the gym when I started that Nice. What's what's the average of a Muay Thai fighter then? Like, what's the age? It's not just until your body gives in, really. I think I know yeah. fighters that are like 32, 33, yeah. 34. So I'm just hoping my body lasts that long. Mm. It is I'll a, just a, give young, in when the body it is a young in. person's game, isn't it? Yeah, definitely. Still only fine. Yeah, I think it's only fine. Yeah, yeah. 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 Y
I think that, that shows though the level yeah. of skill that you have. That if you're fifth, uh, you are at fifty percent at least, and coaches from uh, Thailand are saying to you, "Oh, just let's just stay and train." Yeah. That's mm -hmm. amazing. Yeah. What's next for you in Muay Thai then, or just in combat sports in general? I have a fight on. Uh, what's this? Victory, Victory Promotions in Newcastle. In December. Um, that's for UK number one. UK number one? Yeah, like just. Do you defend in that position? Yeah, just to see who's best at what's the key though in the UK. Obviously, it's you, Becky. Oh, you're well, world champion. We already know this. Yeah. Um, yeah, well, you know, it's got, it's got to be done, hasn't it? Who are you fighting? Yeah, I'm fighting a girl called Lee Newton on Newcastle. Oh, home for show. what, sorry? Lee Newton. Lee Newton? Mm -hmm. it, I, and what's she like? I don't really know. I haven't watched her. Yeah, I haven't watched her yet. Yeah. No. Do you study your opponents? No. I've, no. And I, I've seen her, she's obviously a good fighter to be to be fighting anyway, yeah. you know what I mean? Obviously, mm -hmm. you go just getting in there. Um, I just let Alan do all that. I don't really, if I watch it, I ever think so. If like, I could watch a video of one of my opponents and then come fight night, I could have practiced on that one, two days that I've seen. Yeah. And then I turn up and do something really different. And I'm mm -hmm. like, oh, I haven't practiced for this. I just train, I would normally train, turn up and just adapt when whatever she did. What about in terms of um, keeping your like, personal life separate to what you do with time um, so and obviously uni and your personal life um do you try and like keep a private life or have you, yeah. have you got a public page or no just just i don't i have deleted, i don't really use facebook i've deleted facebook i don't use really twitter i'm using Instagram. that's that's really it i just i don't i don't i have it as prom i'm not really excited you know like i'm not an exciting person I know I'm like a world champion. So it's the world champion, yeah. I don't really, I have just you, train. Have you never thought about like raising your profile no. and uh, having like a public account or asking someone know. to run it for you and like do all your, your posts yeah, and know. stuff like that? I'm just not an exciting person. Follow you around with the camera, I don't know. I follow me around with the camera because I just think like I'm not even for like good reasons. I'm just a bit dim. So like I just follow me around. So <laughs> I, have com I don't have a comedy show. I don't have a comedy show. But Sitcom. Not, yeah, not That'd the same. Great. Like, um, I just train, like there's nothing to say. I just literally train, go to uni, go to JD. That's your way of and life then, though. But for others to see that, it could be inspiring. Yeah, especially people who are just starting out and say, like an average girl from Hellwood can make it as a world champion. And then... Kieran says it all the time, like, oh, I'll follow you around with that, like a GoPro, and I'm like, oh, I'd make some money off a GoPro in my life. I'm just, I'm just an idiot. Do you feel like if you raised your profile, you'd um, end up with, like, some some like more uh, I don't know maybe larger opportunities. At the minute, like it's hard for me because I would like to fight full time, but because I can't make a living off it as of yet over here, I have to go to uni. So how do you make a living off it? Either get what, what either, do you have to do? Either get signed by someone or I could be a PT, but I don't really want to be a PT. Or just go go to Thailand. In terms of fighting though, so you'd have yeah, to go to Thailand or get signed. What yeah. do you mean by getting signed? So like by the main by a show. But yeah, so like you get like fight contracts. So you guarantee it's certain amount of fights and certain you know what I mean? Right. Well what's the main one for Muay Thai then? Probably your final World one championship. Right. Uh, is that all specifically Muay Thai or do they do different stuff as well? Yeah. Because promoters for all sorts. Yeah, how is just Thai boxing, yeah. Yeah, and they'll pay them to, to be on their roster, so yeah, to speak. And then one championship is like MMA. Like, but yeah. trying to do like the stand up of Thai boxing. In MMA gloves. Yeah. Speaking of MMA. Is this something that you've ever considered? Um, it's probably going to be around briefly, but no. I'm not really an MMA fighter, I'm not a boxer. I am just purely Thai boxer. Like, mm -hmm. Me and my trainer laugh about this all the time, because you see like, people moving over from Thai boxing to MMA. Yeah. Whether it be for the money, for the training, who knows. But like, And they're good, but I know that it's just not for me. I'm not in it. If I was in it for the money, I'd be living in Thailand. Do you yeah. know what I mean? It's not something... I just, I just, I'm just too tall. Just, I just no. I'm don't just a Thai boxer. Do. I just don't like all the. Mm. I just it's just not for me. Like it's good to watch and I'll watch it. Yeah. But I'd rather just stand up and fight with someone brutally and then go home. You've got the stand up and you do the tri you do trips and throws and stuff in Thai as well, don't you? I've yeah, seen yeah. a little bit of that yeah. when we were watching. I'd rather just stand up there. Yeah. Take the thoughts of going on the floor and let me have a rest. Yeah. See, I prefer going like when I'm at uh, jujitsu. I prefer going on the floor. I, yeah, I do. I, I, I hate standing up to somebody. I'd rather just put them on no. the floor and try and choke them off. I think I'm just going to put them on me, I don't know. It's just not for me. I just, I'm not a boxer and I'm not a Thai boxer. I can, I can box, but I'm not a boxer. Mm. And I just, it just doesn't would, would you do that? Would you go into boxing? Because you've got no. a boxing coach, you'd never go into boxing. Though. 
No. What about kickboxing? I don't like it. What's the difference between kickboxing and Muay Thai? Yeah, this, is a, this is a common question, isn't it? Yeah, so kickboxing is more point scoring. Right. So it's... Every like, time I hit Thomas in the face, I'll score points. Yeah, so like, it's not as... Sorry, Tom. Don't do that again. Forgive me if I'm wrong, like, there could be, like, different associations, but from what I've seen, kickboxing's more point scoring, like, flicky. Like, in Thai boxing, you go in there to knock somebody out. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Okay. And you want to go in there and stop someone. Kickboxing's more point scoring. But you can score... more protected, aren't you? You can score points to win in Muay Thai as well. Yeah, but... It's, yeah, you can, yeah, but it's brutal. And you can use elbows and knees. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, um, obviously, there's a big difference between Muay Thai and kickboxing. Yeah. But with kickboxing, it's an Olympic, it's an Olympic sport, isn't it? Yeah. While Muay Thai is not. Mm -hmm. Would you ever consider just going over to kickboxing and trying, like, for the Olympic team or something? Because I'm guessing it's a transfer of skill from Muay Thai into kickboxing. I wouldn't. Yeah, I wouldn't go. I just if I, if I wanted to be in the Olympics to do boxing, I wouldn't go near kickboxing just because what I've learned is like. Like it's powerful, like it's strength. Yeah. I couldn't, I can't, ima like I can't spar right. I'm mm. awful at sparring right. Mm. Yeah. Like if, if you say, oh, like sparring, I'm like, I can't, like, because my reaction is to move out the way and hit back three to right. Mm. But when I'm so used to just in a fight, moving out the way and hitting back three to right, just a naturally throw it. Instinct. Yeah, so I wouldn't be good at it. Yeah. Do you feel that Muay Thai should be considered 100%, to be an Olympic sport? 100%. Yeah. I don't know how it's not. Yeah. I don't know how it's not in the Olympics. Interesting. Yeah. Well, in, in the comments as well, um, give me give us reasons why you think Muay Thai should be in the Olympic Games. Because I think it's I think it should too. I think it's more no disrespect. I think it's more I'm probably biased. It's more exciting to watch. Mm. I, so if you're watching an MMA fight, do you want to watch them tap each other, or do you want to see someone be? And it sounds bad, but do you want to see someone get in? Like do you want to see someone have a fight? Yeah. Like a good fight. A, a, a brawl. It depends, doesn't do you know it? What I mean? Depends. Most people want to see a brawl. I like or... boxing. I just, I just couldn't do it myself. I like I seeing think... the technical aspect yeah. of brawl. I think boxing is more technical. I think that should be in the Olympics, regardless. Like that side, like the points, like yeah. the side to it. Mm. I think Thai boxing is probably a bit too brutal, maybe. Unless you, unless you play amateur combat. Yeah. You know, it's got well. So you put your. The shin guards I don't think you'd be allowed to do it in the Olympics, would you? With no. In it, well, in boxing, rules, so in boxing in the Olympics, they, they wear all the guards. And stuff, so. Didn't they change that? I'm sure they changed that rule. Really. Have they? Yeah, they don't wear the head. I'm sure they don't wear Let's the head. Let's find out. Head. This is what we've got the computer yeah. on here for, yeah. guys. I'm sure they. Uh, they wouldn't wear shin pads, would you, in Thai boxing, if you had a pro level? So it would be hard to find, like. If you're over on scale, because if you're now, with the shin guards off, don't you? Yeah, but I mean, the Olympics, you got, what, judo? Judo, mm. karate, taekwondo is in as well. It's up there all the time. That's probably why I thought it was all Muay Thai is just a good enough mm. mixed okay. martial arts. I've got, I've got a BBC uh, article here. Um, men to start wearing protective head guards. That to was back in 2016. To stop wearing, yeah, I thought. Right, so from 2016, the Games in Rio, the Olympic Committee um, changed the rule by the sports governing body. Duh, 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 duh. They adopted for the change. Um, three years ago, female fighters will continue to wear headgear. What do you think about that? Yeah, each to their own. Do you, th do you think in... Because there's always an argument about sexism and like uh, equality and stuff these days. So do you feel like if um, everyone, wa everyone wants to be on the same level, that they should just be treated at the same level? Yeah, 100%. So do you feel hard. like women shouldn't wear headguards? I think it depends on the individual, but if you're looking at it from that aspect, then I think they, if men are allowed to take theirs off, I think women should be given the option to take theirs off. I too. agree. I, think, I agree too. You can't have one rule for a gender and another rule. Just you get in the way. Yeah. Interesting. I didn't know that. Yeah. I, I think. I think. I, I'm. Don't quote me on this, but I think the reason was is because if you got hit in the head, if it hits like a certain part of the helmet, they wouldn't point. They wouldn't see the point. Yeah. Well, it says there the change will result in a decrease in concussions. Oh, is that a, is that a, a decrease concussions? Um, How can it decrease concussion when it has AIBA ABA IBA provided medical and technical data that showed the number of concussions is lower without headgear. That's that's weird. That's mad. Just get in the way, don't you know? If you get in the way, well, I thought it'd be there to protect. So so if you. So you'd say that people who are like even sparring not to wear headgear? I'd always think it would be a thing to wear headgear like all the time. Strange. Very. Strange. 
Becky, yeah. you used to do powerlifting with us. <laughs> I remember that. Remember that little stint I of powerlifting that you've done? Yeah. Now, yeah, we've got a couple of videos, haven't you? Um, doing squats and bench. They'll be staying in, in wherever they are, won't they? No, they're all, over, they're all over YouTube if you want to have a look. That's fine, money. Are they actually on YouTube? Uh, yeah. Are they? <laughs> I just tried to have a go, I just felt me training. You know, like me fighting stuff. I was when I first turned pro, I just wasn't strong enough. Like, well, I the you, I um, you've done a mock competition with us, I didn't did. you? I was actually alright too, wasn't I? Yeah, and you were at the time considering doing a full competition, yeah, as in go. like um, at amateur level yeah. competing. I didn't though. I, I, I think it's fair than that. I don't think it's my thing. No. I think it was just like a phase of like, oh, it's trying to get strong for your fights. Do you know what I mean? And I enjoyed it to be fair, it was what it was, it was funny. But I feel like it's something you'd ever go back to. No. 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 Straight no. away, no. no. <laughs> So, what? It is interesting. I do think it's great, but I just don't think it's for me. I'm just too, I'm just too skinny for that. Like, not that sounds like bad, and I'm not like stereotyping, but I'm skinny. I know, but it's not my thing. Like, I love strength, and I just, I just can't lift. I just can't. What, what would you say your like bread and butter to your strength training to your camp training would be? What like what exercises would would you? Is it a powerlifting oh, carry over? Yeah, I can deadlift and I can squat. Like, that's what I do in like my fight, my fight camp, but. Hmm. I do everything else with it. Like when I was doing powerlifting, it was purely just like those three lifts, it? Yeah. And I just can't do them all the time. I just, I have to have like a good day when I'm going to the gym and I'm deadlift probably like my best. Mm. Yeah. But I can do it, yeah. What, what, I mean, obviously you're, tra you're not training specifically for the powerlifting, but what would right. your numbers be like in terms of like, do you do high reps, low reps? At the minute, I'll put some eight weeks out. They'd be low reps, high, high numbers. Yeah. Yeah. I'll get back to you on that one now. Let us know. I will. Yeah, we need to know. Becky, thanks for coming on the show. Oh, thanks it's for much appreciated. Um, really good. Hopefully you enjoyed that one, guys. We are streaming uh, on audio and video. because We've got a video stream over there. Um, so you will be able to catch us on all auditory platforms and all video platforms. <laughs> <laughs> but you looked at me there. Oh. Um, so you will find this episode first on um, iTunes, Spotify. You will find us um, on Facebook, Instagram, IGTV and YouTube. I, I like that episode. We need to get more guests on. We will have more guests very soon. If you've got any questions for Becky or if you've got any comments about that episode, then please let us know yeah and also comment on like if you any other guests that you you could get in Becky take two Becky take, take two, two. <laughs> it could be a part two you know because I thought that could have we could have spoken I think we could have extra. sat here for another hour easily yeah, definitely. I'm sorry guessing not now you're natural you're thank natural thank you so much so yeah we could do that again Becky part two thanks for coming on the show Becky thank you thanks for listening guys thank you it's a wrap <laughs>